Uh, you should be grateful that you weren't hear, hearing me. I was, I was just sort of rambling on, uh, not making any sense. So, actually, I did you a favor by not having the mic on. Um, you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> we're ready to start now. Um, the, the people here are like, oh, God, you're the lucky ones. I wish, I wish we could turn the mic off. But anyhow, we're going to do two main things uh, today, and we should get to this today. Uh, one of them is to talk about different kinds of links. We talked about the basic format of a link last time, and that was a link to link to a different web page, a, a web page that someone else has written. Strictly speaking, uh, another way to put that is a link on a different web server. A uh, web server is a system that does, as the name implies, it serves up web pages. So in other words, and we'll talk more about this uh, towards the end of the semester, uh, but when you finish a web page, it works on your machine and you're ready to make it live so the rest of the world can see it, you need a machine that's going to be a web server. And you can either set it up yourself or you can uh, employ a web hosting company to host your, your, your pages. And you put your pages on this server, you, you transfer them up there, um, sort of like uploading attachments to email, similar sort of thing. Um, and then people can ask for the pages and they get it. Well, there's different rules for constructing link links if it's going to another page that you've written that lives on your web server versus if you request a page that lives on someone else's web server. All right, so if I had a fan site about the Olympics, um, I could have uh, links to several different pages of mine, or I could link to the United States Olympic Committee or um, the official Olympic page or NBC's page or anything like that. And the way that you would construct the links is, is liable to be a bit different. There's also links to uh, email addresses, so that when you click on a link, it automatically opens up the person's email client. And you can also have what are called internal links, which are sort of links uh, to a section of the page. So we're going to study those different kinds of links, and there's probably a few more that are covered in your textbook, but those are the main ones that we're going to talk about today. We're also going to talk about, get into what are called structural HTML tags, and that'll be sort of the second half of, of the lecture. At any rate, let me pull up the example we had last time. <laughs> ah, thank you. So we're going to re take a minute to review what we have on this page, and then we're going to do a few other things. All right. All right, here's the page that we had last time. And it had a collection of tags on it, some basic tags. I see we've been upgraded to Windows 10 in here. Interesting. All right, uh, this is the page that we had last time. And again, keep in mind that in the interest of time, I didn't fill in, but you know, there could be paragraphs for each of these. And I'll show you a little trick that sometimes designers use when they're sort of setting up a page, but they don't have the complete text. Maybe someone else is writing the text for them. Uh, which, is an, which is not uncommon. Like maybe, for example, if you're developing a web page, 
you're developing the HTML code, but maybe marketing department's going to write the text for you or something like that. So sometimes you're responsible for creating a text, and other times you're getting it from someone else. But we'll talk a little bit about that either today or, or next time. At any rate, this is an example of a link. If you notice that the, pardon me? Oh, if you notice the link is blue, which indicates that we have not yet visited that page. All right, that's default behavior. Um, probably the end of the week uh, on Wednesday, if not uh, next week, um, we'll talk about CSS and styling our web pages. And so far, the, the appearance of our pages have been very, very plain because we haven't put any style code in there which means that we uh, are seeing the browser's default behavior. So by default, a link is blue and underlined if you have not visited it, visited it yet. So if I click on the link and visit this page, it'll take me to here. And I can go back and the coloring is a subtle difference, but that, the, the coloring is a magenta now. It's, it's a slightly different color. And that's a useful uh, um, navigation uh, technique to let people know what links they visited. Um, it's good because if you're looking for a piece of information and you haven't found it yet, well, you see the links that you've tried, right? So you know not to go back to them. On the other hand, if you knew that there was a piece of information you found that was valuable and you wanted to go back to it, the visited coloration of the links tells you, well, hey, that's the pages that you visited, so you can go back to those. All right. At any rate, this is a page on a different web server. It's not a page that I created. And the syntax for the link looks like this. I'm going to open it up in Notepad++, which is available in, on this machine now that they've upgraded it. And if we look here, the syntax of the link looks like this. It's an A. It's a tag like any other tag, except it has a little bit of additional information. And that's called a property or an attribute. All right. A link? Well, a link to what? Well, a link to this website. All attributes look the same in the sense that they're the name of the attribute, an equal sign, and then the value of the attribute. And the attributes appear as part of the starting tag between the less than and greater than sign. This is the one thing that's nice about Notepad++. Again, it's not a, a graphical editor where you can just drag things around. But notice that, you know, you can shrink or expand the tags. Um, and it does provide you a little bit of, of assistance. All right. So this is a syntax if we are going to a link that someone else wrote. href equals, and then the address of the web page, including either HTTP or sometimes HTTPS. All right. So that indicates that we're going to someone else's web page. HTTP or HTTPS colon slash slash. That means you're going to someone else's web page. Let me go and let me save this, a copy of this page. And I'm going to call it page two. I'm going to save it also on the desktop. And I'm not going to put any content on this page. I'm just going to call it page two, just in the interest of time. Notice that you get a little bit of what's called IntelliSense, where as you type something, it shows you the tags that are available. That's useful sometimes. All right. So I now have page, my, my original page, and I have a page two. 
What if I want to link those two together? All right. Well, I can do it this way. I can say something like, Here is my page two. Notice that the link mainly looks the same, but notice that when I have the href, it doesn't say HTTPS and then the name of a website. Because the assumption is if you don't put those things in, it's another page that you have written. And the assumption is also that it's another page that you've written that is in the same folder. Now, for now, for the first few weeks of class, we'll keep everything simple and we'll just put everything in a single folder. In case we have, in this case, we have everything on the desktop. But if the pages are in the same folder, all you need to do is say the name of the file, but it needs to be the full name of the file, including the file extension. And again, we see here that page2.html. It looks like on this machine the file extensions are turned on. So we know the full name of the file, which is what exactly what we want to, to have happen. So now if I open up this page, absolutely nothing different. What do you think happened? No? I don't think so. Maybe. I don't know. Let's take a look. I think what happened is simpler than that. I think I just forgot to save it. Yeah. <laughs> That's one thing to, to be uh, leery of if you're doing something and you don't notice your change. Two things happen, uh, typically to students in LAM. Is one is that they forget to save it, just like I, I made the change and forgot to save it so the change won't take effect yet. The other thing is some students, like especially students that maybe copy their files between the desktop and their thumb drive or whatever, you may actually have two copies of the page open. You might have a, a copy of the file on your thumb drive open and you might be, have a copy on, your, on the desktop open. So you might be looking at one in the editor and one on the browser. So that's a very common mistake. So usually what I do if students have that problem is first of all I make sure that they've saved it and then secondly I make sure that they're, all, that they're looking at one page only between the browser and the editor. So now when I do that and refresh, there we go. And here's my page two. And if I click to it, I go to my second page. Maybe. There we go. I don't know what this browser is doing. <laughs> yeah, maybe. We'll keep, we'll keep this window open. We'll come back Wednesday and we'll see. Maybe it will be open by then. I, I typically use Chrome and uh, ultimately, ultimately you need to test your pages across several different browsers. Um, and the goal is to make it workable on all those browsers. At any rate, this is, we have the page, and again, I can create a link on that second page to go back to the first page. So I can edit this guy in Notepad, and I can say a href equals Olympics.html and have my second 
page link to my first. So I can go between the two. It's a good idea to have it so that you could go back and forth between them. Uh, a lot of the assignments, I don't think this, assi this week's assignment, I, I ask you to do multiple pages. But when I do ask you to have multiple pa uh, pages, you should link so that all of them are together. So that I can just start on whatever page and then go to all the other pages that are part of the assignment. Uh, one of the things that we'll talk about later on today is the navigation tag, or the nav tag. And it's a good idea to simply have all your pages listed in the nav tag. That way, again, you can simply go from page to page. All right, that's one kind of link. Um, be, besides a link to, so we have a link to uh, someone else's web page, we have a link to another one of our web pages. Next kind of link that we have is a link to a section of our page. All right, so for example, and for this I'm going to go. I'm going to go to a website and pull up some dummy text. This is what I talked about before. Like if, if we don't have time to write the full text out, um, sometimes you use sort of a, a filler text. Now, you will not use this on a completed web page, of course. All right, so please don't turn in an assignment that has this. But as you're working on developing your web page, you might not have all the text ready yet, like for your project. So um, what web designers and other designers use is something that's called Greek text. It's not really Greek, Greek designer. I was talking as I was typing, Greek text. So I can ask for one paragraph of Greek text here. And I can simply copy this. And it's actually, I think, not even Greek. I think it's Latin, or looks like Latin. But at any rate, I can put this in as sort of just filler placeholder paragraphs. So I can see what my page looks like when it has a bunch of text in it. OK, so now I save it. Now when I look at this, I will see there, you know, the page looks more realistic looking. So I can do things like figure out margins and spacing and all that um, better than just having blank paragraphs or one sentence paragraphs. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create what's called an internal link. So I'm going to link to a section of the page. Now, where you see this on the web, uh, oftentimes uh, are with like online phone directories. You know, I, I think if you go to LC's site, uh, if you like look up uh, faculty phone directory, there'll be a list of letters on the top of the page, you know, A through Z, and as you click on one of the letters, the page like automatically scrolls to that part of the uh, page. So if you clicked on Z, you jump right to the Zs. You also see this on FAQ pages, frequently asked question pages. There'll be a list of, pay, uh, of questions on the top of the page, and as you click on one, it doesn't take you to another page, but it jumps you to that section of, uh, 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 of the page that you're already on. So we could do something similar to that, to that. So for example, I could put in my Olympic page article about closing ceremonies. And when I click that, I want to jump down to here. 
All right, I want the browser, the, the page to scroll to there. All right, well, for our other links, we use the page name. Well, in this case, it's the same page, so it doesn't have a different page name. So what we have to do is we have to identify, well, where do you want to jump to? And you do that via what's called an ID. All right, so I can put on this H2 tag another attribute. ID equals closing. All right. So I can pick any name I want. Um, the name should be unique on the page. That is, I shouldn't have two sections called closing. All right. Like, I shouldn't, you know, closing match of the basketball tournament, closing ceremonies. I should give them different names. When you talk about something being an ID, it implies that it's unique, that there's only one thing that has that value for an ID. Like, for example, your student ID number. There's only one student that has your student ID number, and that's you. All right? You think about it, if you, if they, if you were able to have more than one student with the same ID, that would cause all kinds of confusion, right? You know, who do you send the bill to? Um, who gets credit for the class, who gets the degree, and so on, right? So each student has their own student ID number. IDs here work the same, so that we know for sure exactly where we want to jump to. We're going we're to make sure that I, our IDs are unique. So it's an attribute, so just like every other attribute, it's part of the starting tag, and then when I put the link, Still has an href, so the basic form of the link tag is the same. All right, um, it's still a href equals something. We have a link, and here is what we're linking to. But we put the value of the ID, and we start with a pound sign or hashtag, depending how old you are. So, what this says is, that pound sign or hashtag at the beginning says, don't go to a brand new page, stay on this page, but jump to the thing that has an ID of closing. When you see the pound sign or the hashtag, think of it as meaning the thing that has the ID of this. So when I click on this link, it's going to jump to the thing that has an ID of this, that is down here. So if I save this, an article about closing ceremonies, if I click on it, it scrolls so it becomes visible. And it really depends on how big the browser window is. If we have a very small browser window, It's a little more obvious. If I click on that, boom, it jumps to the top of the page. So it will jump to and will make that section visible in the browser window. It won't always put it on the top. It depends on how big the page is and how big the rest of the content is. But it will make that section of the page visible. Now, there's an easy way to get back to the top. And that is simply a href equals pound sign back to top. So I can go to the closing ceremonies. I'm reading, reading, reading. I can click on that and I jump to the back to the top of the page. So you can see this is very useful like if you had frequently asked questions or if you had a phone directory or a department directory or something like that. Yes? For the, for the back to the top, that's the pound sign. Yeah, just the pound sign just by itself. 
All right. You don't have to do anything special to identify that. The browser knows that pound sign simply means the top of the page that you're on. All right, one last kind of link before we get into um, the next topic, and that is an email link. And this is going to be a little hard to demonstrate because I don't know if, if there's an email client installed on this machine or not. So it might not work completely on this machine, but I can show you how to do it. And uh, we can go from there. And this is an email link. You have probably have been on web pages that says something like, you know, if you have, if you want to contact the owner of this web page, click here to email. And you can do that a couple different ways, but a lot of times when you click on the link, it will actually open up if you have Outlook or if you have Gmail or if you have some other kind of email um, client installed. It will open up your email client and, and get ready to send that person an email. Again, the basics of the link are the same. A, href equals. I have a link. That's what the A means. Href equals, this is what I am linking to. And in this case, what am I linking to? I'm linking to, I want to send an email to, and then I have the name, uh, a colon, and then I have the name of the email address. So mail to colon, and then the value of the email address. Again, notice as I add these new links, they're blue. Why are they blue? Well, I've never clicked them yet. All right? Whereas the other links that I've gone over in previous examples are the magenta, because I have visited those links. All right? So I click on this link, and it's asking me how I want to send the email because email isn't set up. You normally wouldn't have this happen. If you were to install this on your machine, um, you know, it would open up Outlook or, or whatever your email client was. I, well, I can try. I'll click on Outlook and see what it does. Who wants me to set up my email account? But you get the idea. You could you could try this on your machine at home, and whatever you have configured for your email client will fire up. So that's a nice thing to do. Again, it's convenient for the user. Rather than simply saying, if you have any questions, email mzellers at lorraineccc.edu, you can just create a link that says click here to send an email, and it will fire up the person's email client and Get ready to go. All right. So the bottom line on these links is that all these links, the basic format's the same. A, href equals, and then enclosed in quotes is what you are linking to. And you could link to another person's web page. You could link to another one of your web pages. You could link to a different section of the same page that you're on, or you could link to uh, someone's email account and, and send them an email. So all those things are, are simply options. They're simply different values for the href, different things that you could link to. A common error, by the way, is people forgetting to put something between the starting and ending A tag. What's the symptom? of that. 
If I did that, what's going to happen? What's the browser going to do? Pardon me? Yeah, there, there'll be a link on the page, but there'll be nothing to click on to call that link. So if I go and save that, Believe it or not, there's a link here for page two. There's just nothing I can click on to, to call that link. So a lot of times people will call me and, and say, call me over in lab and will say, um, hey, um, I, you know, my link isn't working. And, and a lot of times it's because they, they de haven't put any text in. All right. So a link really has those three parts. has the starting A tag, the ending A tag, and between them it has whatever you want the user to click on to call that link. And for now we're going to use text. Um, in future examples we're going to use, uh, we could use images. So we could have like uh, our company's logo and when you clicked on that it would go to another page if we wanted to. The other thing that sometimes people do is sometimes people think that this is a tag and we'll do something like that. It isn't. The href is part of the A tag. It's additional information about that link tag. The other thing people do is they forget the href uh, attribute. Well, that's where you say it's a link, but a link to what? Well, which of the billions of web pages out there? You have to specify what you want to link to. Any questions on this? I want to notice one thing before we move on to the next topic. I want you to notice this. Notice that there's a difference between H1s, H2s, paragraphs, and the link tag. Let's look at links. get put side by side. Page two, article about closing ceremonies, send Mike an email. Those get put side by side by side. Whereas H1s, H2s, paragraphs start on a new line. All right? So some tags stack like this on top of each other. And some tags get put side by side. These are called block tags. These are called inline tags. So, of the tags that we've seen so far, all of them but the link are block tags. So if you notice, H1, on a new line starts these. Here's a paragraph tag here, so that starts on a new line. This is an H2, so that starts on a new line. Here's another paragraph, so that starts on a new line. So all of the H1s, H2s, H3s, paragraph tags get stacked up as blocks vertically. The A's, however, get stacked side by side. If I kept adding links here in my code, they would just get put side by side by side. When they ran out of space in this line, then the next, it would, it would drop down to the next line. Why is this link on its own line? Because it's part of a paragraph tag. So the paragraph dropped it down to there. It isn't the link that made it start on a new line. It's the fact that it's part of a paragraph. So all tags are either going to be block or inline. All right? And, and we'll talk more about those later, but I did want to observe that. 
All right. There are certain standard formats for things, right? And that's useful. For example, a magazine. Magazines have covers. Magazines have usually a main article. Magazines have table of contents. Magazines might have sections. I'm thinking about if you bought, for example, Time Magazine. There might be a world news section, United States news section, art section, entertainment section, literature, and so on. There might be a letters to the editor section, and so on. And a lot of magazines sort of follow the same general setup. All right. They all have covers. They all have cover stories. They most all have table of contents. A lot of them have letters to the editor sections. And a lot of them have other sections for different sort of topics. That's kind of good, right? Because, you know, where are you going to find a table of contents in a magazine? At the beginning. Right? So in other words, I pick up a magazine. I may have never seen that magazine before, but I know that the table of contents is probably at the beginning. That's useful. That way we don't have to figure out every individual magazine, how it's set up and how it's structured. So there's sort of a convention for how magazines are set up, and that convention is useful because it makes it easy for someone to just pick up any magazine and, and kind of know how it works. All right? And we can pick a lot of things up like that. You know, books are like that. You know, textbooks are like that. B textbooks are divided into chapters. Usually table of contents at the front, index in the back. All right? And maybe bibliographies. You know, textbooks at the end of every chapter might have a list of questions. And so on. So these sort of standard formats are useful. What are some things that are standard on a lot of different web pages? What are some things that you're going to find on a lot of different web pages? Yes? A link to the home page. And I'll say even more than that, there's going to be some sort of navigation that's going to take you from page to page to page. So there's going to be a navigation section of your website, of a website. All right? Um, what else is pretty standard? There's usually information at the bottom that's important, but maybe not critically important. Like maybe like, like copyright information, or if you have questions, contact this person, or something like that. Usually there's a banner that sort of identifies this is what the website is. All right. Banner, navigation, sometimes the body of the page is div divided into sections. And then finally there's a footer at the bottom. So it's sort of a kind of common format. And one thing I do in this class is I visit, uh, a lot of times I visit other college websites. Because college websites, um, if you look at them, there's a lot of consistency on how they're developed. And I think there's a lot of good examples of, of college websites. So let's pick up. Let's go to a few websites and let's look up. Here's Cleveland States. Now, notice what we have. We have a banner. Oh, we can't see it? Use your imagination. No. We have a banner that says, hey, this is what it is. Cleveland State University, you, you're not on Kent State University or Lorain Community College or Cuyahoga Community College or Harvard or whatever. You're on Cleveland State's website. Here's the logo of it. Very common to have logos here. At the bottom of the page, just as specified, there's some additional information that I won't say isn't as important, but not as necessary to get in your face. There's actually sort of two sets of this. All right. There's navigation that goes from page to page. And then there's some sections. Student success, news, engagement, events. All right. If we went to another website for a university, 
Let's go to Kent State. <laughs> Site can't be reached. Maybe it's not Kent.edu. It is. Well, that was weird. All right. Guess what? Almost the same sort of layout, right? If you look at it sort of on a, on a skeleton level. There's some navigation. There's a banner that identifies it. There's their logo. Some more navigation here. Some sections here. And guess what? At the bottom, you got all this stuff. Oh, and look. Back to top link. And notice what that link says, kent.edu, Kent pound sign. All right, so just what we finished learning. We could do this all day, and we'll find that since these are the same sorts of websites, they're going to look very, very, very similar. And that's actually a good thing, right? It's good to be creative when you develop websites, but not at the expense of readability and usability for the person. In other words, you might say, well, I'm going to be creative. I'm not going to tell the person what university this is until they click six pages in. All right? That's clever. That will keep their interest. Well, no, that's just a bad idea. <laughs> Maybe. Or after the third click, oh, forget this. I'm going somewhere else. All right? <laughs> exactly. So, there are tags. There are tags in HTML to represent the different sections. And these are called the structural tags. All right? And we'll cover a few of them. We'll start to cover them today. I'll introduce them to you today. And we'll continue this on Wednesday, and we'll see examples of this. First of all, let's, let's list them, and I hope I can remember them all. There is the header tag. Now, this gets a little confusing because we have a head tag and a header tag, all right? I didn't make up these rules, so don't blame me, all right? The header tag is meant to be like this. Sort of the banner on the top of the page that identifies, like, what the site is. It's important to make it obvious what your site is. You don't want people guessing what your site is. All right? If people are guessing, that's kind of shady. All right? Uh, in other words, who, who tries to keep you guessing uh, about what your site is? People that are maybe trying to manipulate you or whatever. Reputable web websites, you want to be in your face to say, hey, this is the website that this is. So there's no misunderstanding and no guessing whatsoever. So there's a header. There's a footer. And of course, that one's pretty obvious. That's going to be the bottom of the page. There is a nav section. These two, you're probably only going to have one on a page. Nav, you're probably going to have one on a page, but I guess it's possible to have more than, than one. In this example, this is probably a nav section. And again, without looking at the code, it's impossible to know for sure, but if I were doing it, this would be in a nav section. But, you know, this could be in a nav section as well. And this could be a nav section. So you can have sort of different nav sections on your site. There are articles. And there's an article tag. Um, being that this is a home page, um, it might not be as obvious. Let's click over here. This could be an article tag. And you could have more than one article per page, right? Um, 
depending on how big they are. There is what is called an aside. An aside is where there's additional information about the article. Sometimes, for example, you'll, you'll see um, in, in articles um, maybe um, you know, maybe there'll be an article, let's keep with the Olympic theme, about a particular Olympic sport. And there might be sort of a secondary article that talks about maybe an injury that one of the key players in that sport had. Where it's sort of like additional information. It's related to the main article, but it's not the main article. You know, um, you know, so maybe, um, you know, going backwards, you know, uh, about the United States uh, basketball team winning the Olympics. And I think, um, what's the guy's name, Carmelo Anthony became the leading scorer in U.S. Olympic history or something like that. So it might be an article that talks about the game and the tournament, the United States winning a gold medal. Then it might be sort of a side article that just sort of highlights one player or provides some additional information. I guess in this case, this would be the aside. In other words, this is an absolutely critical information, but it's sort of nice to have. So for example, if I read this and there was something that I was confused about, it told, tells me who wrote it so I could contact them. All right, so it's additional information. Finally, there is a section tag. Section and article are almost inter interchangeable. I guess I would say that um, an article is where you have a text that you might categorize as an article, uh, a text, you know, a series of paragraphs about something, whereas a section might be other sort of content. So, for example, I might have a section that's like a photo gallery. All right? You don't really want to call a photo gallery an article. Usually when you think of an article, you think of words. All right? So, it's not really an article, but it is definitely a distinct section of the page. All right? <coughs> so, that would be another um, tag that we can use. All right. So I want to introduce these to you today. Next time we'll look at examples. All right. The key thing to remember is really these three in my mind are pretty obvious. Header, it's on the top of the page. Footer, it's on the bottom of the page. Nav, a set of links. These are maybe not quite as obvious, but they relate to other sections of the page. Articles, or other sections, or maybe a related article, so you'll call it an aside. Now, I wouldn't agonize about this. I would never deduct points from you because you use a section tag instead of an article tag, or an article tag instead of a aside, or something like that. Um, but the other ones are pretty obvious. You know, if you put the thing that's on the bottom of the page, if you say that's your header, I'm probably going to debate with you. All right? Or if you have a set of links in an article tag, if, if you have a set of links to all your pages in an article tag, we're going to say, no, that probably belongs in a nav tag. Next time we'll look at examples of these. These are useful. Because number one, it more completely describes your document. So things such as search engines that go and look at your document have a better understanding of your document if you use these tags. And secondly, when we get into styling, when we say, I want my navigation to look a certain way, I want articles to all look a certain way, to get that consistency, these will be important for those reasons as well. So we will cover this on Wednesday. Any questions? for today. Any questions in North Ridgeville?
Are you okay? All right. We'll see you over in lab then. Someone bumped their microphone. Looks like the person in the third row. Yeah. Could be me. Okay. <laughs>